everyone, this Chuck here. And in this video, this is catered towards PC players, but I'm going to be showing you the best graphics settings to be setting on your PC regardless of what you're playing on. So this is the most optimized settings that I have tried, tested, and have figured out that these are the best ones prior to the update. And then I did it again once the update came out. And honestly, it's no different. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So you're going to want to go to display and graphics and then window mode. Honestly, it doesn't really matter which one you choose. You should choose full screen, but I'd rather you choose borderless because it makes alt tabbing easier. Plus alt tabbing can cause a memory leak in the game and you don't want that to happen. So I recommend setting this to borderless resolution. Set that to your monitors maximum resolution. So it's native VSync. That's entirely up to you you could choose adaptive adaptive is probably the better option fps doesn't matter set this to either what you want or to set it at your refresh rate gpu doesn't really matter unless you have multiple gpus which nobody's running sli these days so it doesn't really matter now let's get into the graphical quality so texture quality you're going to want to set this to high now the reason why you want to set this to high is because the texture quality between high and ultra is no different so except on a few opaque objects around the world that you're barely going to look at or notice for for example like the green boxes that you find around the planets that has a slightly different look on ultra it's just slightly sharper but everything else has no change so you're gonna want to set this to high and save yourself some vram animation quality you want to set this to enhance because this is a very cpu dependent operation now if you set this to ultra you are going to get no quality difference between enhanced high or ultra so i would recommend that you set this to enhance so that way animations still play smoothly even from a further distance shadow quality this is the big ticker here especially in the new update shadow quality is a very important one to choose so for shadow quality i recommend enhanced now the reason i don't recommend high is because high has a weird issue with the gpu right now especially on ultra enhanced is the better option plus they added screen space shadows which if you don't know what that is that means that smaller objects have a much sharper shadow at the source of it it's kind of like ray tracing but in a screen space solution and on enhanced the shadows are softer not necessarily sharper but the screen space shadows are unaffected so in, in a way it kind of gives it a more realistic appearance the screen space shadows make the edges sharper while the rest of the shadow from a distance is a little bit softer and it adds a nice little touch of realism and saves you a lot of performance post processing you're going to want to put this on high anything below high is going to disable sun shafts and sun shafts are beautiful those nice little volumetrics are just nice to see on planets reflections this is something i've heard a lot of people not understand especially now in this update so reflections there's a difference between enhanced and high so enhanced uses dynamic cube maps to reflect the scene depending on where you're at high and ultra adds screen space reflections to the scene now they did update this back in orbital and it's a lot better now it's more physically based and it's more true to real life so depending on the one that you want to use which i would obviously recommend going the screen space route especially now that we have an update to water i would say put your reflections on high because the difference between high and ultra is barely noticeable you might as well save yourself the extra GPU performance and just go with high. Volumetric effects, this is another one that you're going to want to change. Back then, I would recommend that you set this to high because the cloud resolution was just piss poor. But now that they've updated the clouds and water this update, uh, and also the planetary volumetric effects, I would say you should set this to enhanced because even though back then on high, they were still sort of like low res but at the same time high res this update really did add a whole host of new stuff and they just look far better than the original assets so i would say choose enhanced and it really doesn't look any different between high and ultra it's very very good how they implemented this terrain tessellation you're gonna want to keep this on high 
going anything below high is going to result in a very smeary mess of terrain and you just don't want that. Going from high to ultra results in a bigger GPU and CPU demand for it, but at the same time, you don't really get that much visual quality. So it's really not noticeable when you go from high to ultra, and there's really no difference between going through them. So you might as well set this to high and save yourself some performance. Planet quality, this affects the draw distance and LODs of certain aspects of the planet. So for example, foliage and minerals and fauna, flora, stuff like that. So you're gonna wanna set this to high because this does matter the most and going from high to ultra results in no difference. It also results in a much more demanding task when you go from high to ultra. So you might as well stick to high and save yourself some performance. Water quality is a new one this update and going from standard all the way up to ultra, I found that going to high is the best way to use this because going from high to ultra results in a much more demanding workload on your GPU and it's almost like the game doesn't want you to be running on ultra. So you might as well set this to high, save yourself a ton of performance. You could get away with enhanced, it still looks great. But at the same time, I would say stick to high because high has a noticeable difference between enhanced and high. Base complexity, this one really depends on your overall system. If you have a decent system with a decent GPU and CPU, then I would say set this to high. Don't go to ultra. And if you have a worse system, you know, a system that can't handle bigger bases or larger bases, then you're going to want to go to enhanced. Although, I recommend staying on high regardless because on enhanced and standard, there's a lot of issues regarding the way that it loads in different parts. And especially on freighters, this can be very detrimental to you if you go anywhere beneath high. So you want to stay on high regardless of your system, but if you really need all the performance you can get, I would say go to enhanced if you're just around bases a lot. Anisotropic filtering improves the clarity and crispness of textured objects when viewed from a distance. I would say if you can set this to 16, you could go to 8 and save yourself even more performance, but going to from 8 to 16 does have a visually noticeable difference. and. I would say that I recommend keeping it on 16 since it's the modern standard nowadays for gaming. You might as well go ahead and do that and get yourself some nice crispier textures from a distance. Ground Truth Ambient Occlusion aka GTAO is a screen space algorithm that creates shadowing around objects. Essentially what it does is if you have like parallax textures or things like that, you know things that have a lot of depth to it or just an object in general then it'll cast like a slight shadow around the edges of it where it's needed. Honestly, going from enhanced to high and ultra has no difference. You might as well stay on enhanced. This is a new piece of technology, this update. If you have the ability to turn on NVIDIA Reflex, do so. If you don't have an NVIDIA GPU, this is not going to be accessible to you. Let's talk about anti-aliasing because there is a whole host of different stuff here. So we have Effects AA, which is very fast filtering but can result in a slightly blurred image. TAA, which is a fast multi-frame sampling that is sharper than FX AA. FSR 2.0, DLSS, and DLAA. Now, I didn't mention FSR and DLSS because these are upscalers, especially DLSS. Like I said, if you don't have an NVIDIA GPU, you can't take advantage of DLSS or DLAA. But if you have FSR 2.0, which the majority of you do, it is a open source temporal upscaling solution. It's not AI based like DLSS or DLAA, but it does provide a good amount of quality for what it's doing. So if I had to choose between FXAA, TAA, and FSR, I would choose FSR because the TAA solution in this game is honestly pretty bad, and I would say FSR 2.0 on quality mode is probably your best bet. If you can't get good performance with that, you might need to drop FSR's quality. But other than that, I would recommend FSR 2.0 for the majority of people. But if you have an NVIDIA GPU, take advantage of DLSS. And if you have a strong GPU regarding from NVIDIA, then I would say choose DLAA. For example, I have a 3070, so I can take advantage of DLAA, regardless of my quality settings. HDR and motion blur is subjective, 
You can turn on HDR if you want. I don't use HDR purely because I want the most color accurate display. And motion blur, I just don't want to use, period, because it looks bad on videos. So, with that out of the way, that is pretty much it. And honestly, this is the result you get. The water still looks beautiful. And the skies still look beautiful. Textures are still high quality. There really is not that much of a difference, man, if I'm being completely honest with you. Shadows still look great. They're nice and soft, but they're not like low resolution soft. They just look soft. The screen space shadows add shadowing around the character and objects that need it, and it looks great. Anyway, that's good to it for this video. If you enjoyed this PC optimization guide, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell to protect and serve.